Uh, good afternoon, sir. I, ca I can continue now, sir. You are ready? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, we are already live. Okay, let's start. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this afternoon episode of Pursue, which is for Pursue 5U, general pathology with specifics in neopl neoplasia. And we are streaming live from Kolkata. And today we'll be continuing with neoplasia with session 4. And to talk on that, we have Dr. Major Palash Kumar Mandal, who is an Associate Professor in Pathology at Sagar Dattha Medical College, Kolkata, and a Lab Director at Sun Hospital and Heart Institute, Kolkata. Please keep your mic muted, your camera off, and please don't share your screen. With this, let me request uh, Dr. Mandal, sir, please share your screen and start. Thank you so much, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. So we continue with our uh, topic on neoplasia. And as you know, neoplasia has been found to have a genetic basis. So the genes are the ones which are most important driving forces for a cancer to happen. Right, we can see. We will, we will be discussing today the molecular basis of cancer uh, and we will try to elaborate upon some of the genes which are in, involved in carcinogenesis. We will be discussing it uh, in bits because 
the whole uh, there, there are a lot number of genes which are involved in neoplasia and discussing each one of them individually may not be possible so we will be restricting our talk to important genes and we will proceed there uh, thereafter So, uh, as you know, this is a uh, picture which has been taken from Robbins and this um, picture I had shown you before also this chart or the diagram. So, flow chart what it says that normal cell if it undergoes any damage, there is there are DNA repair genes who successfully repair the cell and bring back to its normal, uh, normal shape or normal function. However, if there is a failure of DNA repair or there are inherent, inherited mutation in the DNA, DNA repair genes, then the mutations in the genome of the somatic cells, they progress and that progression is further facilitated by the activation of growth promoting genes, inactivation of the tumor suppressor genes or alteration in the genes that regulate apoptosis. Now, finally, what happens is that there is unregulated cell proliferation or decreased apoptosis and leading to clonal expansion of the damaged uh, cell which in fact leads to the uh, development of carcinogenesis okay so with this background with this knowledge and background we go back and see what are oncogenes what are proto oncogenes and what are oncoproteins See, these terminologies are very important. You have to understand what, what each term means. Don't use it loosely because each has got a separate meaning. Now, what are oncogenes? They are the genes that promote autonomous cell growth in cancer cells. Okay. Autonomous cell growth in cancer cells. It is very important. Autonomous. The word autonomous because there is no uh, further uh, for the stimulation which is re regulated once the oncogenes become active okay so they are autonomous they can drive the cell growth they can promote the cell division by themselves without much external support so that is the meaning of autonomy okay now what are proto oncogenes they are the unmutated cellular counterparts of oncogenes unmutated cellular counterparts of oncogenes and these uh, proto-oncogenes when they are mutated they become oncogenes okay so proto means before okay so proto-oncogenes when they are mutated they are converted into oncogenes so normally proto-oncogenes are present in all all of us okay oncoproteins Oncoproteins are the product of oncogenes. You see, any gene, they will lead to the formation of a protein. Okay. The transcription, the mRNA will lead to formation of protein through the transcription. And that protein leads to further downstream signaling. Okay. That particular protein which has been generated after, which is a product of a particular gene, leads to further downstream signaling and the uh, whether it is associated with cell cycle whether it is not associated with cell cycle there is a continuous signaling which goes on okay so now here we are since we are discussing oncogenesis so these oncoproteins are the ones who are the product of oncogenes oncogenes are already mutated mutated proto oncogenes so the product of mutated proto oncogenes or the oncogenes and they they do what they do are devoid of internal regulatory mecha mechanism this is important devoid of any internal regulatory mechanism because normally the proteins which are uh, which are the product of the proto oncogenes they have some internal regulatory mechanisms there is always a balance i have told you there are always checks and bounds for any process in the body so anything cannot go uninhibited okay so if there is an excessive growth 
then growth has to be curtailed or put down okay so similarly if any untoward uh, untoward signaling happens there will be some counter signal to to stop that uh, unwanted signal which is leading to some uh, action in this case cell proliferation okay now oncoproteins they do not have that check to stop their uninhibited growth so that is a very important point because that is the crux of the story which leads to the formation of a tumor or tumorogenesis and their product and their production in the transformed cell does not depend on growth factor or other external signal okay so this is again very important because they are autonomous they become they become autonomous they uh, they do not need any growth factor once the oncoproteins are generated they do not need any further support they are self sufficient and they lead to self destruction as well so these are the steps of cell proliferation in a normal cell what normal cell have what happens in a normal cell there is a binding of a growth factor to a specific receptor and activation of the growth factor receptor which in turn activates several signal transducing proteins in the inner leaflet of plasma membrane so there are these signal transducing pro transducing proteins are present in the inner side of plasma membranes at times these proteins are seen to have two ends one protruding outside the plasma membranes and one which is present inside the plasma membrane okay so but the receptor actually is the one which has that particular end but the protein which is there which is present in the inner side of the plasma membrane it is attached to the it is it is acted upon by the growth factor receptor which after activation leads to the uh, signal uh, activation of the signal transducing protein am i clear so these uh, diagrams I, i had shown you before also it has very clearly given in robin so there is the plasma membrane and there is a growth factor receptor and the growth factor receptor is usually acted upon by a growth factor which comes from the body and it is a signal you see you can everything is a signal so growth factor comes as a signal and attaches itself to the growth factor receptor meaning that in the cell there has to be some growth okay now this growth factor receptor what it does it activates some signal transducing proteins which are present in the inner leaflet of plasma membrane as i told you growth factor receptor has got is a elongated structure Uh, and it has got two ends one protruding outside so signal transducing proteins do not have two ends it is the growth factor receptor which have two ends so which has the upper end protrudes outside the cell membrane and where the attachment of this growth factors take place and the inner part that is that gives attachment to some other proteins okay so it activates the signal transducing proteins on the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane and then what happens transmission of this transduced signal across the cytosol that is the cytoplasm to the nucleus via second messengers so it is the first messenger which is happening that is the signal transducing proteins and this signal again is transmitted through the cytosol to the nucleus why does it have to go to the nucleus because nucleus is the area where the cell division will take place all the cell cell cycle everything has to go through the nucleus because that is the area where the dna is stored where is the area where the chromosomes are present cytoplasm does not contain dna isn't it so everything has to go to the nucleus so that is the point of action understand and now the entry and progression of the cell into cell cycle leads to the cell division okay so the second messengers they carry the signal to the nucleus and lead to cell division okay 
So these are the names of various proto oncogenes which have been converted into oncogenes due to uh, by some mutation and yes. the associated tumor. This is a picture from Robbins. So I don't want to name one a uh, one by one. So you can see there are some names like this PDA uh, PDGF. This uh, platelet derived growth factor beta chain leads to development of astrocytoma. FGF that is fibroblast growth factor leads to uh, development of stomach cancer. Actually, you see these are examples. There are multiple mutations which happen, which have to happen for a cancer to develop, and not one gene. There are multiple genes also which are involved. Okay, so. If you say osteosarcoma, is it only associated with PDF, uh, PDGF mutation? No. One of them is PDGF beta mutation. However, there are other mutations as well in any of the tumors. Okay. So that is why the tumor is very difficult to treat. If you can arrest uh, a particular mut uh, gene or a particular uh, mutation, even then the tumor keeps on progressing if it has acquired the potential of uh, uh, acquired the pro, uh, potential of progression okay so that is very important and hence you have to ultimately identify a point where everything is converging and if you can check or limit that point or block that point then only the tumor progression will actually stop that has that is the essence of target therapy or targeted chemotherapy which uh, the uh, which is being propagated these days okay so there are growth factors i told you growth factors they are present as they also come as signals they also are some proteins which are released from the body itself so they are the growth factors they are the growth factor these are the growth factor receptors egf receptor family epidermal growth factor receptor family there are all these PDA, pdgf receptor family so these receptor families are attached to the plasma membrane and the growth factors they come from through the and through the blood okay Similarly, there are proteins involved in signal transduction, the GTP binding protein, the RAS protein, okay, the BRAF protein and nuclear regulatory proteins are the MIC proteins. So, the mutation in these proteins, they lead to development of various kinds of tumors as has been stated. And finally, they are the cell cycle regulators, the cyclin, the cyclin dependent kinases and so on. Okay, so basically there are a host of genes which are involved at various stages of cell cycle. There are some growth factors, there are some receptors, there are some cell, uh, transducing proteins, regulatory proteins, so on and so forth. So each one of them may be mutated and each mutation lead, may lead to a product, um, a particular type of a malignancy. Okay, now as it is well understood that growth factors they stimulate cells to proliferate but they need to have an attachment they cannot just uh, go and uh, go and ask the cell to proliferate by themselves so the growth factor each growth factor each growth factor suppose a epidermal growth factor is there so that will only attach to egfr that is epidermal growth factor receptor similarly if you have pdgf that is platelet derived growth factor it will attach to platelet derived growth factor receptor so each growth factor will have a specific receptor then only it can act upon that is the first first primary thing you have to understand okay so a pdgf cannot act on egfr understand so a cross reaction cannot happen it has to be very specific now most growth factors have a paracrine action that is what is that that is produced by one cell and act on a neighboring cell paracrine action this is uh, has been taught to you in physiology so most growth factors that under normal conditions okay under normal conditions 
all all these growth factors have a paracrine action however in cancer they acquire the ability to synthesize the growth factors and self stimulate okay the cancer cells they have a ability to synthesize their own growth factors and the growth factors not only synthesizing the growth factors they do have the receptors with them also so if they produce pdgf uh, they will have a pdgfr okay so they will self stimulate it is a kind of self stimulation and this is known as autocrine action that was paracrine action by in a normal cell and autocrine action in a malignant cell okay now the few products of other oncogenes like ras protein or the ras gene they are lying along the signal transduction pathways they cause over expression of growth factor genes okay so this what does it mean this means that there are some oncogenes which are lying across the pathway which are lying along the pathway not across lying along the signal transduction pathway and by stimulation of a particular oncogene they may lead to since they are lying on the pathway itself they can lead to the production of or the express over expression of a particular growth factor gene understand and which is which will lead to the secretion of large amount of growth factors is it uh, uh, can i have i made it clear so you see where does ras fall ras is a signal transducing protein okay so what it does what it does it leads to the over expression of growth factor genes because growth factors have to come you need to produce growth factors growth factors are present in all of us because the growth factors have to drive the cell cycle growth factor have to attach to the growth factor receptor on a cell and drive the cell cycle so they are present in all of us because all of us the cells are um, pro proliferating okay and these special proteins like ras what do they do they lead to over expression of growth factor genes because of mutation normally that is there but when it is mutated that leads to over expression this word over expression is the important because normal growth factor genes were there but when it is over expressed the cells start secreting large amount of growth factors understand so this is important and finally growth factors contribute to the malignant phenotype by increasing risk of spontaneous or induced mutation in proliferating cell because you see the more there is a theory of brownian motion what happens the molecules which are in motion they try to collide to each other so similarly here also what happens is that the cells which are proliferating more and more they tend to undergo some mutation some mutation okay excuse me yes so this mutation may be either spontaneous mutation or may be induced mutation okay so this uh, mutations the more cell will go into cell cycle the more proliferation it will take the chances of mutation are more understand so this is uh, one very basic thing so that's why the quiescent cell they have less chance of developing malignancy the active the uh, the uh, cells which are dividing actively dividing cells like the mucus mucosal cells the epithelial cells of the mucous membrane the uh, the endometrial lining uh, which are continuously shed off and uh, the cycle is repeated every month so these cells are more prone to develop mutations okay so this is one very important thing in this proliferation story now there are these receptors growth factor receptors 
A class of growth factor receptors are basically the transmembrane proteins with which I have already told you there is an external binding domain and is a cytoplasmic tyrosine kinase domain. Okay, there are names for these domains. So, there is a ligand binding domain. So, where, what does the ligand binding domain do? That attaches the growth factor. And what is the cytoplasmic tyrosine kinase, uh, kinase binding domain do? That, that leads to the activation of the uh, or the phosphorylation of the tyrosine kinase and several substrates in the signaling cascade. Okay. So, that there is tyrosine phosphorylation. So, this tyrosine kinase leads to the phosphorylation of several substrates. Okay. So, there is a receptor which is initially in a monomeric form, the receptor dimerizes, means there is a two receptors joined together, they join hands and eventually leading to some phosphorylation of the several substrates and this phosphorylation leads to the signaling cascade and the signaling cascade eventually is carried through the second messengers to the nucleus where it leads to the cell growth or cell proliferation. Okay. Now, the oncogenic versions of these receptors are associated with constitutive dimerization and activation without binding to a growth factor. That is the story. What? That even if there is a no growth, even if there are no growth factors, with these growth factor receptors, if they are mutated, they can lead to dimerization, self-dimerization and activation and further signaling of course. So, that is that is you have to understand each and every gene each and every protein which is associated with the cell cycling uh, with the cell signaling and eventual cell cycling is can itself lead to formation of a tumor and cancer now growth factor receptors can be activated in tumors by multi, by different mechanisms like mutations, gene rearrangements, etc. For example, there is a red proto-oncogene, which, which is an oncogene, and it, it is transformed into an oncogene via mutations and gene rearrangement. Okay, this red proto-oncogene is transformed into an oncogene due to mutations and gene rearrangements. And point mutations in red proto-oncogene leads to main type of multiple endocrine neoplasia types 2a and 2b and familial medullary thyroid carcinoma okay so these are the examples the proto oncogene the red proto oncogene what does it lead to if it is mutating okay now over expression of normal forms of growth factors growth factor receptors like a b2 gene also known as her2 or new a member of egfr family is amplified in approximately 25% of breast, breast cancers and also some adenocarcinomas of ovary, lung, stomach, etc. Okay, so what it means that the growth factor amplification and mutations have been noted in various type of malignancies. And you see this HER2 new amplification is very important in to, the, the, to detect HER2 new amplification in breast cancer is very important because we have a drug against this particular HER2 amplification. Okay, so that is called Herceptin. So, it blocks the HER2 amplification and reduces the, uh, reduces the severity of the breast cancer because HER2 amplification gives a poor prognosis of a breast cancer. Okay. Now coming to signal transducing proteins. So we are coming one by one. Growth factors were there. They may be modified. Growth factors, uh, growth factor receptors may be modified. Okay. So the growth factor receptors their modification we discussed uh, the red proto oncogene now or the EGFR now the signal transducing protein the RAS oncogene so the RAS is a very important oncogene which is a signal transducing protein and RAS is a member of the small g proteins that bind 
bind the guanosine nucleotide, the GTP, guanosine triphosphate, guanosine diphosphate, etc. And it plays an important role in signaling cascade downstream of growth factor receptors. Okay, so growth factor receptors after being activated by getting a signal from growth factor, that is attachment of growth factor, they lead to this signal transducing, signal transduction, signal transduction and that one of the signal transduction protein is RAS. There are three RAS genes which have been noted in humans. One is the HRAS, another one is the KRAS, third one is the NRAS. So, each RAS, each of these RAS genes has been found to have been associated with various type of malignancies. Okay. Now, the mutations in KRAS lead to malignancies in CA colon and pancreas. Okay. Mutations in HRAS lead to bladder tumors, whereas mutations in NRAS lead to hemopoietic tumors like leukemias. Okay. So, leukemias and lymphomas uh, to be very specific, lymphomas. Okay. Now, basically, this is, I am going step by step. First, we discuss the EGF, uh, the receptor families. Now, we are coming to transducing protein family. So, what is RAS? How does it act? That is important. You have to understand. You just not, uh, in the name, knowing the name is not sufficient. You have to know the mode of action also. So, where is RAS present? It is attached to the cytoplasmic aspect of the plasma membrane as well as the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi membrane or the Golgi body. Okay. So, this is you see, this is the growth factor receptor, this is the growth factor, this is the plasma membrane, the three-dimensional picture of a plasma membrane and this is a binding protein and this is inactive RAS which is bound to some farnesyl membrane anchor. So, it is anchored, it is adhered to the inner aspect of the plasma membrane, this is the inner layer of the plasma membrane which we know that it is a bi lipid bilayer, phospholipid bilayer membrane and the inner aspect is this uh, the inactive RAS is attached to the inner aspect with this anchor and it is bound to GDP, guanosine diphosphate. Okay. Now, this bridging protein is there after some getting some growth signal, it activates the inactive RAS into active RAS. So, inactive RAS which was bound to the GDP becomes attached to GTP, guanosine triphosphate instead of guanosine diphosphate and this is, this becomes active. Okay. Now, this active RAS leads to further signaling to the mitogen activated pathway that uh, MAP kinase pathway okay mitogen activated protein kinase pathway so these are the ways how a RAS inactive RAS becomes active and further leads to the proliferation or uh, transcription in the cell cycle so once it is activated by growth factor it normally what it does it flips back and forth because uh, between an excited signal transmitting state and a quiescent state. Quiescent means this quiet state. Okay. So, in inactive state, as I told you, RAS binds to GDP protein, the uh, GDP, and in active state, it binds to GTP, that is triphosphate. Now, activated RAS stimulates the downstream regulators of proliferation which I told you. Okay. So, you have to see that this particular thing leads to the cell cycle.
So, uh, sorry because uh, suddenly this screen became blank, maybe due to some disconnection from the power supply. So, <coughs> what? Uh, uh, so what happened? Uh, what happens is that this RAS stimulates the downstream regulators of proliferation. So eventually, everything has to come down to the nucleus, and the downstream signals they eventually are the signals for the cell proliferation in the nucleus okay so this has been elaborated by that picture which i showed you just uh, some time back just hold on this okay so Now there are some, as I told you, everywhere there are some checks and bounds. So in this action of RAS also, there are uh, this there is nucleotide exchange which activates the RAS. Okay, by that. I think there is some internet issues at your end. Just just check that. Okay, sir. It was happening earlier also, but it got rectified. Sir, so can you see my screen? No, I cannot. Okay. Can you just uh, join in again? Just come out and then yeah, join yes. in and yes. present again. Yeah, now please share your screen. Yeah, now it's fine. Okay. This was where you stopped, right? Okay. So, uh, what happens normally is that there is a cycling which goes on. Cycling means from the active to inactive, inactive to active. So, while it is activated, this is catalyzed by this guanine, uh, guanine nucleotide releasing proteins okay so releasing proteins are the ones which release the gdp and they attach the gtp by and thus activating ras okay so that is the releasing protein now after the activation after the action has been completed so the, the ras has to go back to its normal uh, inactive state so who does that that is done by the GTPS activating proteins known as GAPs. Okay. So, there are another group of proteins. These are the GAPs. You see, this yellow capsule like thing is the GAP which actually leads to the inactivation from active state to inactive state. Understand? So, this is the hydrolysis and gaps prevent uncontrolled RAS activity. So, this is important because everything has to be under control. This is normal cell cycle we are talking about, not the uh, after mutation. Now, after mutation what happens? The RAS becomes, remains in the active form and leads to continuous cell proliferation. That is the difference. While, is, while in normal form, the active RAS after completing its action went back to its inactive form again getting attached with the GDP whereas in mutated form that RAS which keeps on attaching itself to the GTP and never goes back to the inactive form and which will lead to continuous cell proliferation because it is sending signals continuously to the nucleus and the nucleus will uh, follow the signal and it will keep on proliferating. The cells will keep on proliferating and there will be uh, the uninhibited cell growth. Okay. And after mutation, the RAS lies either with a GTP binding pocket 
or with the enzymatic region essential for the GTP hydrolysis, markedly reducing the GTPase activity of the RAS protein. Okay. So you see the RAS protein itself has its GTPS action and that GTPS action you see it has a GTPS action which was accelerated by gap. Now this GTPS action is definitely reduced when it is mutated. And in addition downstream members of the RAS signaling cascade that is the RAS, uh, the RAF, the MAP kinase may also be altered in cells, uh, cancer cells resulting in a similar phenotype that is the active state of RAS and that is continuous proliferation of the cell. Okay, so this is RAS. RAS comes as a short note for undergraduate uh, and uh, undergraduate examination. So please, uh, whenever you are given a short note, try to discuss about the uh, what is the particular gene. Then you have to draw a diagram. You please draw the practice drawing these type of diagrams. Uh, with your own uh, hands and then you have to write about the mode of action and finally what are the cancers which are associated with a particular protein that has been elaborated here okay so you see RAS this is given here and also we had we had discussed okay here also we had discussed so this you have to as if it is given as a short note we have to write all these things Okay, now coming to the next family of tumors, those are the non-receptor tyrosine kinases. Okay, non-receptor tyrosine, uh, tyrosine kinases, the oncogenic mutations in non-receptor associated tyrosine kinases also which, uh, which uh, function as a signal uh, transduction pathway and leading to cell growth. So, mutations whenever the mutations are happening they also lead to the malignant transformation which are the mutations in non-receptor associated tyrosine kinase so there was one receptor associated tyrosine kinase which we gave the example just now also the another example is egfr so egfr these are all tyrosine kinase based receptors and there are some non receptor so there are no the receptor is not there but the tyrosine kinase function is there so the example is that the cabl tyrosine kinase in chronic myeloid leukemia and some acute lymphoblastic leukemias the abl gene is translocated from chromosome 9 to chromosome 22 and where it fuses to with the bcr gene in chromosome 22 BCR gene was there or is there and the ABL gene coming from the chromosome 9 going to the chromosome 22 fuses there and the resultant chimeric gene constitutively becomes an active BCR ABL tyrosine kinase proton or uh, the oncogene and leading to the CML leading to chronic myeloid leukemia. So this is this is again taken from Robin. So this is the chromosome 9, which is a long chromosome. This is a chromosome 22. This is a short chromosome. You see, this ABL from the 9th chromosome goes and attaches itself to the to the short 22 chromosome and forms the hybrid gene or the chimeric gene, the ABL BCR. And this pro drives the tyrosine kinase activity, leading to the proliferation in the hemopoietic cells leading to chronic myelogenous or chronic myeloid leukemia that is in short CML okay so and the importance of this particular it, it is also known as the Philadelphia chromosome and the treatment of CML has been revolutionized by the drug called imatinib mesylate which enables the BCR ABL kinase. This is very important because this is the first targeted chemotherapy which was discovered. Okay, so this first chemotherapy was uh, uh, invented and this targeted chemotherapy led to a number of uh, targeted chemotherapy drugs, therapeutic drugs later on, but this was the first drug to be uh, 
you can say uh, invented because the treatment was invented special treatment that is targeted therapy and that is acting specifically upon a particular particular gene or a gene uh, which is a mutated gene okay and there are several other examples also in other myeloproliferative diseases like polycythemia vera there is point mutation in the tyrosine kinase jack2 activates transcription factors of the stat family which promote the growth factor independent proliferation and survival of tumor cells okay so the mutation in the jack fam jack2 family which activates the transcription family of stat that leads to the proliferation in polycythemia vera okay and also some other myeloproliferative disorders mutation in transcription factors i think i will uh, uh, deal with this and the other one and i leave the rest the mutations which are the cells uh, tumor suppressor genes i will not discuss today so we'll uh, Uh, limit our discussion till this point so transcription factor that is the make on one of the one of the proto onco uh, the proto oncogene is the make proto oncogene and it is expressed in all the eukaryotic cells and they are required when a quiescent cell receives signal to divide okay and make is involved in carcinogenesis by activating genes like ornithine decarboxylase or cyclin d2 that are involved in cell cycle proliferation or cell proliferation and there are various activities of make histone acylation acetylation reduced cell addition increased telomerase activity and so on but the problem is there that there are thousands of make binding sites and equal number of genes that may be regulated and hence a common make carcinogenesis pathway or program is difficult to map so that is why it is easier said that why don't you uh, target a particular binding protein why don't to target a mutated protein it is not so easy because there are so many binding sites for especially for this make and so many genes which are activated that it is very difficult to control or very difficult to pinpoint the source and finally the action and hence the targeted therapy becomes very difficult in case where the make is activated and while on our one hand make activation is linked to proliferation on the other hand there is the cells also undergo apoptosis if make activation occurs in absence of growth factors so if make activation is there growth factors are present so the cell cycle will proceed whereas if the growth factors are absent the they the cell will undergo apoptosis so if this is indirectly a self regulatory mechanism okay now what tumors are uh, associated uh, with mic mutations this is one is neuroblastoma that there are two forms nmic and lmic there is also cmic also so this nmic mutation leads to neuroblastoma lmic mutations are found in small cell carcinomas of the lung okay and the mic regulation the mic tumor uh, um, mutation is seen in burkitt's lymphoma also okay so in burkitt's lymphoma which is a translocation which happens in the 8 and 14th 14 chromosomes these are the normal chromosomes the make oncogene resides here you can uh, and it goes from a to 14 where igg is located and by uh, residing with the igg gene uh, that is ig gene it leads to increased make protein okay this increased make protein leads to cell proliferation so that leads to the formation of burkitt's lymphoma cyclins and cdk dependent and this is the last one actually just give me 5 more minutes i think this is uh, last because 
if i don't complete this it will uh, there will be a lot of things to uh, complete in the next lecture so cyclines and cycline dependent kinases eventually as you know everything has to home on to the nucleus and the growth promoting stimuli the quiescent cell has to enter the cell cycle everything the cell cycle is the one which is which has to be started okay because if the cell cycle doesn't start the cell remains in the quiescent stage there will be no proliferation and if there is no proliferation there will be no tumor fine so the cell cancers may grow autonomously the genes that drive the cell cycle become dysregulated so the genes which are driving the cell cycle become dysregulated and what are those genes there are the two sets of genes are there one of the cdks that is the cyclin dependent kinases and what are the cyclines okay so the cyclin dependent kinases are activated by binding to cyclines so these are the cdks cdk4 cdk6 cdk2 cdk1 and so on and so forth so and they are activated by specific cyclines like this one is activated by cyclin d this one is activated by cyclin a so on and so forth <coughs> okay and cdk cyclin complexes what do they do <coughs> sorry <coughs> they phosphorylate phosphorylate crucial target proteins they phosphorylate target proteins and help the cell cycle to progress <coughs> okay so you see cell cycles we had discussed before also just to recapitulate you have to understand that there are some cell cyclin dependent kinases which are activated by binding to cyclines and inactivated by cyclin dependent kinase inhibitors so there are inhibitors and there are promoters cyclines are the promoters and cdk cdk is are the inhibitor this is normal cell cycle now <clears throat> what happens the once the cell cycle progresses the cdks they are they are again uh, deactivated okay and the cyclin levels are rapidly reduced they are declined okay they uh, i mean the levels they decline and cell cycle may uh, not may a cell cycle is like a relay race why it is a relay race because you see there are several sets of cdks and each one is regulated by a different cyclin so suppose the cyclin d was regulating cdk4 and cdk6 this particular portion cdk2 is regulated by cyclin a so cdk2 and cdk1 is regulated by cyclin a similarly cdk1 again is regulated by cyclin b so each step is regulated by a specific cyclin so it looks like each lap is regulated by a distinct set of cyclins like d e a b etc an expression of inhibitors of cdk is is down regulated by mitogenic signal pathway so in normal condition this there are inhibitors after a particular action is over after the target is achieved the inhibitors come into picture and they dephosphorylate dephosphorylate okay so that means the dephosphorylation leads to the inactivation leads to reduction of the cyclines okay but the <coughs> in if there is a mutation there is sorry if there is a mutations the cdk is the inhibitors are down regulated and there is continuous progression of the cell cycle so this is very obvious if you think very logically whenever there is tumor the inhibitors will be suppressed and the promoters that is the cyclines they will be from uh, they will be uh, active activated so this is the list again given in robins so list of cdks and their inhibitors 
and there are some checkpoints. The very important one of the checkpoint is a tumor suppressor gene called P53. We will discuss about P53 in our next lecture class. This is a list of tumor suppressor genes, but we will discuss it then in the next class. So I think because we have completed our time and I am sorry for the interruption which happened in between today and due to some uh, net problems. Uh, I have ended my lecture today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Palash. Wonderful lecture as usual. <clears throat> Very difficult topic to understand at one go. One really needs to go over and over again to understand this. And this is very essential to understand this particular topic, to understand the various aspects of immunohistochemistry and molecular biology. I think you have, you have really gone in a nice space to make everybody understand. Very complica complicated, very difficult. But then I think if people go through your lecture and again and again, and read the book simultaneously, I think they will be able to understand it. Thank you so much. Yes, so next yes, time we will have session 5, new play. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Go slowly, no problem. We have enough. Thank right. you, sir. All right, sir. Take care. Thank okay. you so much. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay.